it is absolutely no secret that I run the Brave browser, but I don't really have any love for Brave as a company, for the product they make, for some of the sketchy PR decisions they've done over time, some of the sketchy features they've added into their browser, which has really, really annoyed a lot of their user base. I run Brave entirely for practical reasons, and as soon as that reason stops existing or I find something that is a better replacement, I don't care how quickly the company dies. So don't take this video as me shilling Brave, trying to get you to use it to like, I don't know, use my referral link or something like that. I think I've had one in my description for a while, but here's the thing. Because of the way that Linux applications work and that no one actually downloads them from the website, even if you have a referral link, if you only have people downloading the application from Linux, it won't actually count as a referral because they're going to go and download it with their package manager rather than from the website. So I don't really have specific numbers on this, but I can guarantee there are some Linux creators who are owed somewhere in the realm of thousands of dollars. The primary reason why I run Brave, which can't really be replaced by anything else out there on the market, at least none of the other browsers I know of, all of the other features can very easily be replaced, is BAT and the built-in ad network. When I use a Google service or something that Google owns, they take my data and sell it. When I use Twitter, they take my data and sell it. When I use Facebook or something that Facebook owns, they take my data and sell it. And I can guarantee that Brave is collecting data with their ad network and they're selling it to whoever wants to buy it. But the one difference with Brave compared to Facebook, Google, Twitter, and every other company out there is that Brave at least gives you some sort of kickback for it. It is worth nowhere near what your data is actually worth, but it is more than nothing. And while that might not be a sufficient reason for you, and you want to actually go and personally keep your data more private, I have made the conscious decision that I don't really care. My data is already being sold, so I might as well have one extra party take it and at least get something for it. If you don't want to do that and you don't want to run Brave, you want to run something like ungoogled Chromium, that's perfectly fine. I don't think you should have to go and sell your data if you don't want to. But in my case, I've made the decision to do so, so that's what I'm going to do. In my case, I run a YouTube account under my real name with my real face out there, so there's already a lot of information of me on the internet. Now, full disclosure, it's not like I'm making hundreds of dollars from this, so just running Brave by itself, last month I got 4.5 bat, which I think at the time of recording is somewhere in the realm of maybe like $3 Australian. I might have it like up on the screen if I remember to put it there. Most of the bat I get is from people who actually use Brave themselves, who decide that every month they want to go and donate a bit of their bat to things like my YouTube account or my GitHub or my Twitter. And from that, I got 37.76 bat. So altogether, I got a little bit over 40. So that works out to be about 30 or so dollars Australian, which until the recent crypto bull run that's happening would have been about a third of that. So some were a bit over $10. That right there is basically the main reason why I run Brave, which can't really properly be replaced. Are the little ads kind of annoying? Yes, but if you know what you're doing, if you're on Linux, you could go and filter out the ads that come from Brave and never actually see them and still get paid for them. Or your other option is when you see that little Brave icon, over time, you're going to get to the point where the instant you see it, you will just instantly close it, which is what I do on my system. But I should actually look at filtering out some of the notifications. I think you may get paid more if you go and click on the ad, but... I have no interest in doing that, that sounds kind of annoying. Now, I don't really buy Brave's PR argument that running Brave is somehow better than individual websites having their own ads, and that when you run Brave, you're actually helping to fund the websites that you're blocking the ads of, because when you get back, you're going to donate it to all of the websites you go and visit. That's not what actually happens. Sure, there might be some people who go and do that, but... I'm sure the vast, vast majority of Brave users keep most of the bat they get every single month to themselves. I can tell you this because as someone who actually runs a YouTube channel that is in the Brave Creator program, whatever, the, whatever they call it, I should be getting far, far more than 37 bat, judging by the number of people who actually run Brave. I don't really care if I don't get more, but 
if people actually were going and sending out the bat to the places they do ad block, there would be more than 37 there. Plus, if a website isn't actually in the Brave Creator program, you still can go and donate to them, but the bat you go and donate is just going to go and sit there, and they're never actually going to collect it until they actually get strong-armed by Brave to join their program. As people start to understand the web more, I think more and more people will just continue to run ad block as a default, and Brave's solution isn't really a proper solution, even if people actually did donate all of their bat they got every single month to the websites they visit, all it would do is move Google from being the arbiter of how people get ads to Brave being the arbiter, which isn't that much of an improvement. In my mind, the best way to handle it is showing people how little they would actually need to donate to go and fund the creators they want to watch, whether that be on websites or on YouTube or anything like that, wherever they want to add blocks. So in the case of YouTube, if you donate, I think, a dollar, that should cover about 500 video views. There's a few other things I want to mention. So in my mind, both Google and Mozilla suck. They suck for very different reasons, but I don't exactly like either organization. I don't really care for the browser wars. All of the big web browsers are equally terrible. But competition is good. And if there was a Firefox version of Brave, I would absolutely run that. But because there's not... I've sort of got to be stuck running a Chromium browser, and I don't exactly like being in this position because Chrome already has a massive, massive control of the web browser market share. While Chrome is slightly different from Chromium, it still is giving more power to the Chromium engine. Now, besides Bat, the Brave Shield, which is the built-in ad blocker and tracker blocker inside of Brave, is the other really big selling point of the browser. You don't have to go and install some extra plugin to do it. It's just built directly into the browser. But I'll let you in on a little secret. The ad blocking and the tracking blocking is the worst out there. I've never seen another ad blocker and tracker blocker break so many websites and break so many plugins besides the Brave Shield. If you want an ad blocker, just go and run something like uBlock Origin. It is such a better tool. I don't know why Brave is so broken in that regard. If that was the only reason you were running Brave, really, really just stop. Go run anything else. Now, in an earlier video, I got a fair comment from someone, and that is, if I just care about making a few extra dollars here and there, why not just go and run Ether or Monero when my system is idle? And... For a lot of people, that actually might be a really good solution. I might do a video on it. There's plenty of others out there. I don't know. We'll see if I decide. But the problem that I have with that, firstly, is that electricity prices in Australia are very expensive. I believe they almost double what exists in the US, which already makes it kind of difficult to make some extra money. Because the prices are very high right now, though, you can still make some money. The other problem, though, is that my computer is right here, right right outside of the frame. And that's my bed back there. And this room already gets really, really warm. And the only time that my system is really idling is when I'm trying to sleep. So that would mean having to have my computer on all night, blasting hot air into my room, which is already a really warm room. And sure, yeah, I, I could do that, but that would make me really uncomfortable. Plus, let's not even get into the problem of living with other people and then just massively shooting up the power bill. If I was living by myself and I had a place with solar panels, that would actually make far more sense to do. Now, at this point, regardless of whether I migrate to another Chromium-based browser or a Firefox-based browser, there's not really going to be any issue with getting my plugins working. It's not like it was a couple of years ago. From what I see now, there's a lot more plugins that just work on both browsers, and everything that I need seems to be in that boat, so I can switch to either very, very simply. So I haven't decided what I'll go to when I eventually leave Brave. It'll probably be something like LibreWolf or Ungoogled Chromium. I haven't decided which one it's going to be. In the end, I'm still probably going to have Chromium and Firefox installed, though, just for the sake of doing any tests of plugins, because it's always good to have the baseline that most people are going to be working from. So let me know, what browser do you run on your system? And if you do run Brave yourself, is it for the same reason that I do? Or is there just something amazing about the application that I've just missed out on? Yeah, there are other things like the built-in IPFS support and other things like that, but 
all of that stuff you can get in other browsers as well. It's just an extra nicety to have it built into the application. I think that's going to be basically everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David Monza, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie Joseph, Mitchell, Peter Lee, Stephen Turner, Yushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, then the links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, Libre, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere, and then this channel's available on Odyssey and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's going to be everything for me, and I'm out.